Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So this video you're about to see on YouTube is a free preview of my course on Timeleaf and the Spring Framework, how they work together. If you like what you see in this series, head over to my website at springframework.guru and you can learn more about the full course. Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So in this module, we're going to take a look at uh, Timeleaf and the standard dialect in Timeleaf. We set up, a, we converted over in the last module our, our Timeleaf uh, templates. We were writing them in HTML and we made them into Timeleaf templates per se. But so far we haven't added any Timeleaf commands to them. And I want to take a look and, and see what makes them into a Timeleaf template. So I'm going to jump over to IntelliJ now and show you what's going on here. So inside IntelliJ on line two is where we added the XML name, namespace for Timeleaf. And right now, IntelliJ has it grayed out because we're not using anything in there. And an XML namespace is really a, an XSD, an XML schema that says what you can and can't do. It, it defines what is valid XML. It's a, a very powerful feature of XML. And let's go take a look at what we have in here. So I'm going to go over to the external libraries and we're going to dig into the Timeleaf jar. So here's the, the Timeleaf jar here for Timeleaf 214. I'm going to open that up and let's take a peek inside of this. And down here we have an XML package and it says standard dialect. I'm going to open that up. Okay, this is what's going on when we reference Timeleaf inside the Timeleaf document. We can see here on line 23 it says prefix of TH. That means that when we prefix something with TH and then do a colon, it's going to bring, bring up things inside of here. So and here's all the different things that we can add to our document now, our Timeleaf templates now. These are different things that we can add in there. And this is a lot of, a lot of hints as to what we can and cannot add. So we, we have a number of things here. I'm not going to go into the details on each one of these, but you can see that there's a lot of things that overlap with HTML, HTML5, some of the attributes. So that these are different attribute processors. So we can set this up, and this gives you an idea of the depth of the commands that Timeleaf has. So th these are all, all extensions inside the Timeleaf standard dialect. So I, I wanted to give you an idea, because we haven't seen it yet, that Timeleaf is functioning off of XML and an XML schema. And you can go in at, and take a look at the XML schema. These are valid Timeleaf commands, so to speak, in it. In the next module, we're going to start taking a look at using the, these attributes. And what we're going to do is we're going to span out that XML document to include Timeleaf commands. And this is what's going to kick in that template engine. So a browser is going to ignore this stuff. It, they'll just think it's useless noise and it's not part of the HTML standard. So it, it, it doesn't, doesn't list it. It just ignores it ignores the, the Timeleaf commands. But the Timeleaf engine sees it as valid XML and these the stuff does mean something to it. So essentially when we have like a, an href and then we do a th href, Timeleaf is going to swap that out for us with the templating engine. So that allows us to have one href for the browser and then another one that will get rendered by the Timeleaf engine. These are, are two different things. I want to show, give you a quick peek under the covers as to what's going on inside of Timeleaf and the XML standard and how Timeleaf is utilizing that. So the, a big takeaway a lot of people get confused about is that there's actually two clients. One is going to be the browser, the browser looking at the Timeleaf template in the natural engine or natural templating language. The browser sees it as a valid HTML document. Whereas when Java is processing it through the Java Timeleaf engine, it's reading that and it's reading that document and that, that's how it's working. It's going to replace different things. So it, it is rendering that template for us at request time and it's going to swap out things depending on the, the Timeleaf extensions that we've added to that template. I hope this makes sense. You're going to see in the next module... We'll replace out a couple couple links, a couple references in the next module using Timeleaf tags. And we'll see how in the browser it gets rendered one way, but when we bring it up through the Timeleaf engine, it will get rendered a different way.